for those of you who know the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, when He rests on you, when He speaks to you, it's like a fire that is shut up in your bones that you can't contain, that you have to share, you have to speak the truth. When God Almighty fills you and gives you a word, it's like a fire in your bones that you have to share. This isn't a prophetic word that maybe you're used to hearing. Many people will give you prophecies about blessings and good things coming. They'll tell you that your breakthrough is right around the corner, that God just adores you so much, you're doing a great job and all these things. But where are the true prophets that will speak the true word of God? If you look in the Old Testament, the prophets that were false, told the people what they wanted to hear. They said, blessing. They said, judgment isn't coming. They said, blessing, blessing, blessing. And they made the people feel good. They wanted it that way. But the true prophets of God spoke the true heart of God and called people out of sin to repent. And it's the same in this day and age. There's not many true prophets who will stand up and speak the truth. There's not many true teachers of the word of God who will stand up and preach the truth. There's not many who will tell you the danger that this church is in, the modern church of this time, the danger that she's in, the lukewarm church. There's a false gospel that has been taught that is completely foreign to the word of God, foreign to the, to the church history, the church fathers, completely foreign to church history, revivalists all the way through. There's a false gospel that's taught that if you just believe, you don't have to turn away from your sin. You don't have to surrender your life to God fully. You just believe that he died and rose and then boom, you're safe. Say, God, forgive me. And boom, now you're a child of God. Let me tell you that's not in scripture. The verse that says confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you'll be saved. That's written to Christians that have already repented of their sin, been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Belief is part of it. It's one part of it. The whole thing has to come together of true salvation. And because the true gospel isn't preached, sin has run rampant in the churches. Such a sick sin that overflows. And the Lord gave me a picture. It's like if you walk into churches, if you talk to believers, it's like everybody is underwater, thick, murky, dark water. And they've been underwater sometimes their whole life. I was too. I was the same way. I grew up in the church, but I still was in sin. I didn't know there was freedom from sin. I didn't know the true gospel. Jesus said the truth would set you free. Whoever sins is a slave to sin, Jesus said. But when the sun sets you free, you'll be free Indeed, there's a freedom. Paul said it like this, we become free from sin and slaves to God. The fruit is holiness and the end everlasting life. There has to be a godly sorrow that works true repentance that leads to salvation. When there's not a godly sorrow and a true repentance, a true life surrendered, then you have false converts, people who think they're saved while they're watching porn and then saying, oh, I'm sorry but they're doing it again and again and again, not true repentance. There's people that think they're saved and they're going to wake up one day in the pit of hell if they don't repent. And when God shows you this stuff, it weighs heavy. It's not a light thing. God showed me how everybody is under murky, murky water, almost everybody in the churches. And they can't tell that they're underwater. They can't tell that they're in filth. They can't tell because they can't tell that they're not accessing the light because they've lived underwater for so long. And how do people find the truth? You have to go back to the word of God and get rid of man-made doctrines. How do people find the truth? It's not hard to find. Any heart that loves the truth will find it. But every heart that loves sin will not find it. God will give them over to a strong delusion. And that's what we're in. The strong delusion of a false gospel being preached that was never preached in the Bible, never preached by the first church fathers, never preached by the revivalists, Wesley and Finney and Edwards and anybody else. It was a true servant of God. It was something that was invented in the 1900s, but it's not the true gospel. But yet it's so prevalent that it's like a sea of murky water where people are thinking that they're worshiping God while they're still in sin. They're lifting up unholy, nasty hands while they watch Netflix and all the junk and filth of the world. 
And then they lift up hands to God thinking that they're accepted in the sight of God while they've committed adultery. The Bible says adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself God's enemy, an enemy of God. The Bible says if you continue in your deliberate sin, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for your sin. There's only expectation of judgment. And it tells us why. Because you insulted the spirit of grace. You trampled on the son of God. You treated the blood of the covenant, which made you holy as if it were common. Those, that's the word of God. God showed me how so much of the church doesn't realize just the extent of the deception that it's in. It doesn't realize the extent of the nasty, filthy water that it's under. And God showed me that the one side, the hyper charismatics look over at the Baptist and reform side and say, those people are deceived. They're deceived. Those are the people that are in deception. The Baptist and reform side who teach once saved, always saved, who teach easy believism, who don't preach holiness, also look to the other side at the charismatics and they don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they, they look at the other side and they say, those people are deceived. They look at the hyper charismania and say, those people are deceived. Those people aren't preaching the gospel. So you have both sides looking at each other saying, you're not preaching the truth. And they're both right. They're both right once they both are missing the fundamental truth of what it means to be saved. Because they're both in continual deliberate sin both sides now am i saying everybody of course not there's many people that are truly born again there's a remnant but i'm talking about the in general the church system the lukewarm church is sick and under water god has showed me this so many times over and over one side is looking at the other and saying you're teaching false and the other side is looking at the other and say you're teaching false but they don't realize they're united in one thing the united in sin, both the hyper charismatic side filled with sin, the other Baptist side filled with sin. They're both filled with sin. You can name any denomination. Sin is what unites this lukewarm Laodicean church. People aren't zealous for righteousness and holiness and living godly. They say, I'm under grace. And I say, yes, if you're truly born again, you're under grace. And what does that grace do? The Bible says it teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live righteously and soberly in the present age and godly in the present age. So if you are actually not living righteously and soberly and godly and denying worldly lust, you're not under grace. The Bible says that you're under wrath if you're in sin. Real grace causes a heart to be reborn, real faith surrenders a life to Jesus Christ. So both sides are in sin and it's going to take a company of people to part that sea and to bring the true remnant through on dry land. Like a Moses, it's going to take a true remnant of zealous believers who will stand there and call on the power of God and say to the people, this is the right way. Come through on dry land. Don't look to the right or to the left. You don't need to go into the denominations and the church system that is sick. But together, we'll live for righteousness, whether it's in house churches or whatever it is. True believers that will be zealous for the things of God. Zealous to follow God with all their heart with no compromise, zealous to show people the way of righteousness, zealous to wake up a lukewarm church and warn her about what's coming. Zealous for the truth. And those people, those people will lead God's people through on dry land. Just like Moses. Are you one of those people? who will stand up for righteousness? Are you one of those people who will stand up for holiness? Or will you make compromises with Egypt? God bless you.